Hello and welcome back. <clears throat> in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to make flaming text in Adobe Photoshop. Uh, it's a good thing to know and it can be used in very uh, many different areas and it's uh, it's just kind of a fun one to know so I'm going to go ahead and get started. Uh, the first thing that we do is we open up a new document in, uh, in Adobe Photoshop. It can be the default settings if you want. Mine's a 5 width I believe by, uh, or a 7 width by 5 height and uh, <clears throat> and it's a uh, 72 dpi and set up rgb it would be set up kind of for web <clears throat> okay uh, the first thing we're going to do is press control i on the keyboard to invert our color to black you could also go to image adjustments and then down to invert it does the same thing next thing that we'll do is select a text tool in the toolbar and we're going to uh, just make an area that we can type some text into um, and i'm going to set the color to white up at the top here and I'm just going to go GDB kind of a short one it's a that just kind of stands for uh, glaze folio design blog which is where you're probably viewing this at uh, I'm gonna <clears throat> change the point size to well let's do like maybe 150 yeah that's uh, that's pretty good and then I'm also going to uh, I, I think that the flame effect uh, works a lot better on uh, serif typefaces, so I'm going to go ahead and just go with uh, Times New Roman, should be one that uh, that you you would have, and I'll go ahead and make that bold, and there we go, that's uh, that's what we have, and I'll go ahead and zoom in a little bit, um, don't mind uh, the pixelation as I zoomed in. Okay, the next thing that we do, and as you saw, I just centered it into the middle of the document, it just uh, to, you know, for whatever. Anyway, um, <clears throat> what I'll do then is uh, copy this text layer, and you can drag it into the new layer, or you press Control J on your keyboard to copy that layer. Uh, the next thing that we'll do is go up to Edit, down to Transform, and we will do uh, <clears throat> Rotate, uh, or you could press Control T on your keyboard. And then we're going to just rotate that copy. Um, be vertical, and we'll go ahead and place it. And just so that uh, you know, you don't get confused by your layers here. Let's go ahead and make that first uh, text layer invisible, so that you only have the vertical one. Next thing that we do is we go up to filter, uh, to st uh, stylize, and down to a, a wind. Uh, okay, and it tells you that you have to rasterize this layer in order to do the wind. So we'll press OK, and it will rasterize it for us. Um, now we have the method set to wind. We have the direction um, from the right. That should be fine. And we'll press OK. And then you can press Control F on your keyboard to um, <clears throat> to apply the effect a couple more times. And I'll just apply it twice more. And uh, something like that should be good. Or you can do it one uh, one application less if if you would like. I'll press Control T on my keyboard. Or you could go to Edit Transform and then I'm just going to rotate this back to uh, horizontal and move it back to about where it was. Then we will make the uh, <clears throat> other text layer visible again. And we're going to just try to line up the text so that they're right on top of each other. And I'm just arrowing it over to where I think it's right on top of each other. Okay, so this is what we have so far. And I'm just going to move both of them down a little bit so that we have all of that uh, in there. <clears throat> okay, so now on the top layer that uh, we we had the, all the wind effect on, we're going to uh, make all that look like flames. And what we'll do is we'll go over to our tool palette and underneath the, uh, underneath the gradient tool or the paint bucket tool, whichever one's showing, there's the blur tool, the sharpen tool, and the smudge tool. What we want is the smudge tool. And uh, it looks like my brush size is actually pretty good. Um, 13 is what it's at, 13 pixels. And my hardness is at 0, and that's about what yours should be at, too. And what you do is you just take your brush, and you just kind of wiggle it up through these uh, the wind that you had just made. And you can do it as much or as little as you want. I'm just going to go fast so that I don't waste your time. But if you take a little bit more time, you can do some really cool things and make it look very realistic. 
the more if you uh, I've been like I said I was going quick and I I've been going downward. But if you keep your, most of your movements upward, it's uh, a lot better. And you see, I kind of just made a two kind of tails off of that one just by dragging them both up like that. Okay, and like I said, I'll just kind of fly through this for you. But you want to do this over your whole document. I'm going to make my brush a little bigger so I can go a little faster. That's a little too big. And remember that uh, these flames are also going behind those letters. So uh, like you saw when I came over to the D here and pulled it out, it came uh, from outside the sides of these letters too, and that's kind of a cool look. So try to do that in a couple areas too. Okay, uh, it's looking pretty good. Okay, that's good enough. Uh, now what we want to do is apply some uh, fiery looking colors to that, and that's pretty simple. What we do is we'll just double click on that layer, and we'll apply some uh, effects to that layer. Um, I, uh, I'll go ahead and start with an inner glow. I'm going to change the color of the inner glow to uh, a orangish color. And we will... Oh. Okay. Orange color, inner glow. We'll change the uh, blend mode to normal, and that'll uh, give it that orange color. And the opacity, I'm going to go to 100%. And uh, then we'll do an outer glow. We'll change that to kind of a yellow. That's okay. I think what I'll do with that. is just put that at about 50% because I like the uh, the orange to kind of show through a little bit more and then uh, you can change the size if you want which I don't really recommend uh, but just kind of around with the settings until you get exactly what you want and then what I'll do is an inner shadow to kind of make it look like the letters a little bit burnt and I'll just bump up the opacity a little bit the settings of multiply let's try normal that looks pretty good actually, so I might leave it just kind of like that, uh, at, uh, a black uh, normal blend mode setting, and I, on this one, mess around with the size once again. Um, that looks pretty good. And let's see, let's see if, actually, uh, think that the inner glow is a little too strong, so I'm going to go ahead and bump that down a little more to about 15 or 20 percent. Okay, and uh, like I said, um, just mess around with that until it looks really pretty good. And what I'll do is I'll go to my layers, and to, I'll go to my text layer that hasn't been uh, rasterized yet, and I'm going to go ahead and rasterize it. And this is your original text layer. So go up to layer, down to um, rasterize and rasterize type. Okay, and uh, I do that because now I'm going to add a layer mask. And I'm going to go ahead and um, erase some of these really hard edges so it look, gives it more of a burnt effect. So I'm going to select my eraser and put the hardness of the brush down to zero. And we'll go ahead and just keep that 13 size brush. And I'll just go ahead and go in and um, brush away, like I said, brush away some of the brush away some of the, uh, the letters, and I'm going to take the opacity of this brush up at the top, I'm going to take it down to 35 or so, because I don't want to lose all of the, uh, all of the letter, but I do want to soften it up a lot, so if you want to lose more somewhere, you just kind of click a lot on it, and with that layer mask, if you want some of it back, you just brush it back in. 
Okay. So. And you can also do this on your uh, other layer too if you want to get more of this effect because uh, a lot of that layer is still back behind your text. As you can see, it kind of just um, breaks up these edges a little bit. Makes it look like maybe there's been a little bit more destruction onto these letters. I'll go ahead and add a layer mask on this one too and just show you what that looks like. Erase some of those. Also, uh, last step, let's go ahead and put the original text layer in front. That way, when we erase the, uh, the layers, it'll show through to the, the burning text, and you can kind of erase a little bit more where the text, or where the, the flames are. So you'll erase the tops of the letters, and just go into your masks and do some erasing. Okay. And that's looking pretty good. I'm just going in my history and going back on some of those that I didn't really like. But anyway, that looks that's looking pretty good. And uh, that should go ahead and probably conclude this tutorial. Um, you can certainly go around and, and, uh, and play around with this a bit and uh, you know, put your own personal touches on it and whatnot. But uh, but this is pretty much it. So I hope that you uh, you learned something. I hope you liked this tutorial. Please follow uh, me on Twitter and Facebook. Please subscribe to my blog. Uh, and if you liked this tutorial, um, please feel free to click the like button below if you're watching this on YouTube. And if you're not watching this on YouTube, please go to YouTube and uh, click the like button. I really appreciate it. Um, thank you very much. And uh, we'll see you again next time.